Hey guys, Thogden here, and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today, we're on the streets of Madrid for a bit more of a personal video. You know, usually I sit down with Thogden and we talk about football, um, or I go to a football game, but it's not like that. We're in Madrid, and we're going to be going to the area where I cut my head open for the first time ever. I've never been back to this point. It's been 14 years. I've still got the scar. I've got, I'll have the scar for life. And it's probably my nearest death experience, I would say, because we'll, we'll get into more detail on exactly what happens when we get there. But I think it's going to be a bit of an emotional one, and I thought we'd bring you along. So let's get over there and find out what's going on. A lot of people, when these things happen, they go unconscious and they don't remember anything. I actually remember the exact moment I hit the rail, the contact, getting picked up by you and somebody else and being rushed to an A&E. And those memories have never gone in my life. As much as I was in this moment of shock, I remember this square. And we're here now for the first time in so long. And it's unbelievable. I mean, let's just reenact it. Let's reenact it. Right, we're here, Dad. Right, I'm thinking back to the 21st of February 2008. Now, later in the day, we were going to go to Bolton Atletico Madrid. I was wearing a Bolton top and a jacket. I remember that. It was quite cold that day. <laughs> yeah. We came to this museum, the Reina Sofia, which is one of the best museums, art galleries in Europe. You were six, your sister is five, yeah? And the deal was, we went to the museum, and if you were good, if you didn't cry and stuff, you get a treat, it might be a Coke or a, a pastry or something. And on this day, we gave you a bouncy ball, yeah? Should we go find the bouncy ball? Should we try to <laughs> go in and find it? You'd been very good, yeah, for an hour or two. You got a bouncy ball each. You know how your sister is, five years old, straight in the pocket. But Theo, no, you love balls, tennis yeah. balls, whatever. So I can imagine myself just running you all the way through. All you want to do, like, Theo, yeah. all you want to do is bounce your ball. Yeah, of course. You've been in a museum It's, it's a six, seven-year-old's dream, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I'm sure we were just around here, and that's when I did the run with the, the bouncy ball across. I'm pretty sure it's the rail here. Now, I think the rail has been updated for health and safety reasons. You can imagine I'm half the height, yeah? <laughs> it's like a pit like that. Running out, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And bang, my head goes right into this rail. You can see it kind of comes out, proper metal solid. If that hits your forehead at pace, you're finished, mate, honestly. They might have redesigned the levels and stuff, but the rail's exactly the same. And it's crazy, I see kids run around now and I think, bloody hell, they've got to be careful. I, I guess they put these floors down so you can't bounce a ball anymore. Because <laughs> honestly, I ran up here, I smashed right into that. And next thing I know, like my head's open, it's split open, there's blood everywhere. You've, you've walked ahead, Dad, you love to do that. You completely missed me. So a random guy from a bar here just runs out and helps me. He runs out, I've never met the guy, and I never will meet him. And that is gutting, because he, he could have saved my life, because he knew exactly where to go. There was an a &E in that building up there that he took me to. You came over by that time, Dad, and you two just ran in. Thog Mum was in shock. I look back and I see, I think he was a North African guy, a local guy, with a white t-shirt soaked with my son's blood. He's picked up my son, who's unconscious, six years old, blood all over his t-shirt, and he's jogging with my son. And my first thought was, what the hell's going on? I didn't speak any Spanish, he didn't speak any English, but he sort of gestured and pointed to that building. I could see the bone, I could see the bone in yeah. Theo's head, and I said to myself, that will be a scar for life. It still is. It still is. But I'm pretty sure this is where we went in to yeah. the medical center. Now it looks a bit posh, a bit funky. Back then it wasn't. It was just a, a nondescript door. Like, just a picture, like, there is blood that she's squirting out my head. Like, nothing. If there wasn't a medical center so close, I don't know if I'd be here today. So to think that it probably isn't a medical center anymore, it's just nuts. Who, who knows if I'd have survived if it wasn't there back in the day? Mad, isn't it? Theo, what was the first thing that you said after you came out of the hospital with your stitches in? I was like, can we still make the game later? Because <laughs> <laughs> Atletico Madrid Bolton was the whole reason we came to Madrid. And I know I had a big accident on the day, but when you're a kid and you've had a bit of anaesthetic, you're thinking, yeah, you're going to be all right. So I had this yellow and red patching, like, and I was just thinking, yeah. I'm still making this game. We've come on this trip for this match. I want to see a foreign stadium. But I remember going on the tube from like from through Madrid 
and everybody was looking at me, giving me sweets, giving me chocolate, like laughing. Like And remind us, Theo, what was the score that day between Atletico Madrid and Bolton Wanderers? Well, over two legs, we won 1-0, and that was the second leg, so we went through, and it was a party. Brilliant. And that is the story of how Theo nearly died in Madrid. We live to fight another day. <laughs> Hurry up, you mug. <laughs> Look at Dog Dad. Your dad's new wheels.